Yeah. So a couple of weeks ago, we did a, uh, we did a, a short podcast on prepping for winter sports. Mm -hmm. And in those, in the, the talk there, we introduced concepts across hypertrophy strength and then power and speed training, how to kind of interplay those. If you're kind of feeling a little bit behind the ball going into the winter season with as much snow and you know, precipitation as we've had here in the last few weeks, people are like, oh shit, I got to get up there. And they haven't really, it's, it was early. Like we got out there early. Now we're, we're definitely deep into the ski season. And uh, when we walked away from that, we're like, you know, we've talked a lot about our Red Dot Fitness Strong program. That one has gained a lot of attention. People hear us talk about that mostly uh, because it's really our foundational muscle building and strength program. And most people need to that's be, what they need to do. That's what they need to be doing. So yeah, mm -hmm. we kept it kept it really basic, and we did that that uh, that podcast some time back. Mm -hmm. And after doing this winter sports conditioning, when we're like, you know what, we should really talk about our our max program, our Red Up Fitness Max program. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, the, the program's been around for a while, and and just for the listeners, it's just CC and I in here today. You know, talking about this is we authored this with a the guy that used to be with us, who's now a strength and conditioning head strength and conditioning coach at a, at a university not too far from here and, and couldn't make it today. So we're just, today we're just going to talk through what the program is, who it's for, uh, why you might be interested in it, and some of the the detail and the nuance that exists within the program mm -hmm. uh, to, to give people a little bit of an understanding like, well, okay, so what's the difference? They sound like they're both building muscle. They're both building strength. Yep, they're doing that. But there are some very specific uh, programming variables that we utilize in this MAX program to elicit a specific result. So um, it's really more for, you know, just kind of starting it off, it's really more for like the fitness enthusiast that's been in it for a while. Mm -hmm. Yes, they, they've had some kind of base. They have some kind of fitness experience, or I shouldn't say fitness, weightlifting experience behind them. Um, they know how to navigate their loads based on, um, you know, how they're feeling past programming. Um, so yeah, this, this isn't for your novice individual. This is exactly what you said for somebody who has experience behind them. Yes. Because at the end, what we're trying to do is we're trying to, to help a person express as much of the strength and muscle that they have in the form of power and speed. Mm -hmm. Um, through basic movement patterns, but also more athletic movement patterns. And, and I want to, I want to really be careful about, or be specific, not careful, be specific about how we explain this. And, and that is, look, there are, there's a lot of programming out there and there's a lot of max power speed type programming, depending on maybe what type of ath uh, athlete you are, what you may or may not be competing in. Uh, this is going to be more for the general exerciser that has that base underneath there. And you mentioned mm -hmm. weightlifting experience. I'm going to go back and I'm going to go like lifting weights, like yes, strength good. training, mm -hmm. weightlifting being the sport of, you know, the clean and jerk and the snatch. This is, there's actually none of that in this program, which might surprise people, but it also might be helpful for people because they're like, you know, I get, I've gotten these programs before. And anytime you work into this max power speed thing, there's always, you know, some Olympic lifting and I'm just not good at it, or I've never had any coaching with it. And I'm not that comfortable with it. And, or I'm trying to do this at home and I don't have the equipment. We're going to get into that. And we've already thought through all that for people. So this is helping, helping you become, uh, or excuse me, increase your power and your speed but it also increases your strength and can increase your, your muscle mass for that person that has a base level. So there's an assumption that you've been doing some type of strength training program in the past mm -hmm. and that you're familiar with some movement patterns and your body. And to your, to your uh, point, how do those things impact me? And can I adjust appropriately for loads, rest periods, things like that? Because we're going to program that stuff in here and understanding like your your rate of perceived exertion um, is uh, is an important right. a, important aspect here. So we're gonna we'll talk a little bit about that. It, in the end, it's very much like Red uh, Red Dot Fitness Strong, mm -hmm. and this is really the sequel to that. So if you've been in our Red Dot Fitness Strong program, this is kind of this is what we built to come after that, mm -hmm. uh, so that you can now take that strength and muscle that you built. And kind of express it in a different way. You know, um, before we sat down to do our podcast, I took a moment to look back over our Red Dot Fitness Strong and, and look at our, our MAX programming. And, you know, the exercises that we have in MAX, what we what we do is more um, 
contrast training. So what I mean by that is, you know, we're still going to do your foundational squatting and hinging and you're pushing and you're pulling. We're not throwing anything at you that's going to take a ton of skill acquisition that you're going to really have to have a huge foundation on, such as the Olympic lifts. Um, And when I say contrast training, we'll be doing some big, heavy lifts. Let's just say, you know, um, a bench press followed by something a little bit more explosive i.e. plyo push-ups. So again, they're foundational exercises, but it's how we're programming it and then it's how it's being executed that's different in max versus strong. Yeah, it's important. You mentioned uh, skill acquisition and when we're learning how to lift weights, mm-hmm. uh, that is a huge part of it. It's, it's, it's one of the major components. It's being able to do this stuff effectively and proficiently and in, in Probably one of the most important pieces of it is to do it repetitively. Mm-hmm. So you you have to be able to repeat this activity over and over again and really s- try to feel every rep. So right, you, I think we said own it. Yeah, and so that right? is a term we're actually yeah we actually use in the program is owning the movement, right? Owning that load, owning that speed, owning whatever it is that you happen to be doing. And so skill acquisition is super important. But what you're referring to there is the high level of skill that it takes in order to perform, say, something like a clean and jerk or a snatch Mm -hmm. or even some of these more complex things. So we'll talk a little bit about the exercises that are and sort of aren't in here beyond, you know, again, clean and jerk and snatch. Mm -hmm. We're not doing any of that um, in this program. Uh, It's not that you couldn't add this in or add that in it at certain points, but we've chosen exercises and we've chosen movements that most people could do if they've got a little bit of a training age underneath Mm -hmm. them. And again, training age, I'm going to say, this is probably for somebody that's been training well over at least more than a year. Mm -hmm. Uh, they, they've, they've, uh, They've got some muscle mass on their frame. They've, they've been through kind of the ups and downs of doing too much at times and maybe not doing enough at times. Maybe they got caught up sort of in a linear kind of bodybuilding type program and they maybe then they moved into something way on the other end of things like a CrossFit style program. This is going to be good for a person like that because they're going to really recognize how the program is organized and how it, how it, um, how it's built and and really follow some really sound principles mm-hmm. uh, to affect change over time. So it's a, it's really a four month and it could go a little bit longer program. It's four phases. Those phases are at least four weeks each. Mm-hmm. Um, and there you, you walk through that. We have these all templated out for you, but it's more than just having workout templates and a lot of programs. That's what you get. You pay for the template and they send you, here's the exercises, here's the reps and sets and, you might get something on the side, which would be like a, you know, or each, you know, some type of a, um, uh, again, like an RPE scale or how to increase your percentages of lows as you go as the, as the, as the programs get a little bit more sophisticated and a little bit, um, I, I think more well done, you start to see a little bit more depth there, but like those programs, we we're bringing that to you too, but also the way it's designed and the way it's set up for people is, you're, you're not only getting the exercises right laid out here. Here's how many, here's how many reps you need to do. Here's how much time of rest you should be taking in between. And here's how hard you should be working from an intensity level. We're also providing uh, a lot of extra material exercise demonstrations. Everything's hyperlinked. So the way you would consume this would be you're either maybe on your phone, you're on your iPad, you're on your laptop or however you want to do it, or you can print the, the, the things out. But if you're, if you're working on it digitally, everything's hyperlinked. So, you know, it's like, I'm not sure what that exercise is. You, you're, you're, you're going to immediately see a, a, a a demonstration video. It's quick, mm-hmm. right? It's not, we're not spending 10 minutes telling you how to do the exercise. It's literally like a 10, 10 Seconds. second video yeah. of, you know, for again, being that this is for a little bit more of the, uh, the, the not so novice, we'll say intermediate to advanced exerciser, uh, y- you might look at it and go, Oh, I knew what that exercise was. They're maybe just calling it a little bit something different than, than what I know or know it as, or, Oh, that's a different, uh, technique that I've seen or haven't seen used for that particular movement. So they're very quick to keep you moving through the, to keep you moving through the program, mm-hmm. right? We're not, it's not a 10 minute lecture per exercise. Mm-hmm. To me, that's very annoying. And we've found that in working with people like, look, I don't need a 10 minute lecture on all the different variations of this. Just show me what it is you want me to do and I'll, and I'll do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it gets you moving. 
Um, the platform that it's on is a, is a really cool le- learning platform that you can then, you can have on your laptop or have say on your, on your phone. So you can take it to the gym with you, take it into the garage, <laughs> take it on vacation, uh, take it to, you know, wherever you happen to be going and, and access is very user friendly. Uh, so you, you have it sitting right there in front of you. And then, uh, some of the other things that come along with it are because we get into the nuance, which we're going to talk about a little bit today. As we move through the phases of the program, there are some tutorial videos in there that do go into depth mm-hmm. and do go into detail on, you know, what are these techniques that we're using? What are these variables? How should you be thinking about them? That includes the demonstration and a little bit longer explanation. So that people as they're going through this program, I think this is really important um, because people want the sexy all the time, <laughs> you know, with this, with these, with these programs. Hopefully what it's doing is it's educating you. Educating them and then hopefully they're getting more out of it because they'll understand the intent that is behind the exercise and behind the movement pattern that we're asking people to do. Yeah, so intention is 90% of this. So I can give you all the templates in the world and if you don't know how to apply the different things that we're giving you, then all it is is exercises on paper. So that's that's a really good way of looking at it. So we've really tried hard to provide some really quality content for people to go back and examine. And if you forgot or you need a little refresher, it's all there. We didn't really invent any of this mm-hmm. stuff. We're just trying to explain it in a way that we found to be effective in when we've explained it to so many of our other clients over the years that we've been doing this stuff. So we just started putting it on, on video, try to make it brief, simple, uh, very, uh, I guess, digestible so that you can move on with your day and then take this into, into your future programming. Mm-hmm. So Again, so as you're going through this thing for like the first four months, you're going to be basically applying some real simple concepts that we take to a couple different levels. You're going to need to in order to affect this result of ultimately having this power and speed. It got the principle of individuality. That's just, you know, that, you know, people respond differently, mm-hmm. right, to, to different things. So you, you know, we know and when, whenever we're doing one of these types of programs, whenever a coach has to write one of these, say for a team or a group of people, there are some fundamental things that we know, right, that if applied, we're probably going to get a pretty good result from, you know, like everybody's heard like the, the reps and set schemes for muscle building, strength, power, endurance, those kind of things. Those are pretty well studied pretty well known. So principle of individuality is that, you know, there are individual, everybody's unique, but they're going to respond differently to the different things. So at some level, you have to make these programs somewhat flexible Mm -hmm. for people to do, to, to work through them and and get a good result. Uh, So we've taken that into account as we've gone through here. Nothing is so rigid that like, if you can't do this, then you can't do the program. Um, Principle of specificity, that one's yeah, you know, as far as the principle of specificity, you know, it's it's talking, we're talking about, you know, um, when you're doing, the best result you're going to get is through training and training that thing, whatever it is. So one of the things with our program is that um, your exercises for each phase are going to be the same because there's a baseline that that you're being introduced to that you're going to practice and that you're going to work on and you're only going to get better at it if you continue to work on it. So that's where the principle of specificity comes in. So um, we're not going to be changing the exercises on you every week or every two weeks. We're going to introduce a basic principle. um, That's what you're going to stick to. And then over time, as you're moving through these phases, we'll add a little bit of complexity to it, Um, but nothing uh, too crazy. Yeah, because we want, again, going back to the skills acquisition, we want you to build the skill, but then also be able to realize the result of the work that you're putting in. It goes back to the old, they call it the SEDS principle, the specific adaptations to impose demands. Mm-hmm. I can go out there and do all the, uh, let's say, seated rows that I want <laughs> in the world, but it's not going to make me a better rower in mm-hmm. the Olympics. It will help me build muscle. It will help me build endurance. It can help me with a lot of things, but it doesn't actually help. It, it doesn't make me, sorry, it helps me. It doesn't actually make me a better rower in the boat. Right. Right. So I, there's all, all kinds of, I have to row in the boat in order to get better at rowing a boat. So that's a, that's a really important one for people to kind of wrap their hand, heads around. And I think the ones that, you know, people will, will expect would be one, we've got to kind of 
especially if you're, you're intermediate to advanced, is you got to overload the body. Mm -hmm. Like there has to be this pushing of the, the, the thresholds. And doing that, that's why this is, you know, when we start moving into power and speed, we are really doing that. We are really pushing the edges or the edges beyond just strength. Now we start to add in speed, velocity, uh, when we start to look at, you know, power just in general, um, mass times velocity or force, excuse me, force times velocity, we're, 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 there's more risk, right? And mm -hmm. so the, the, the overload and, and that said, always, usually what people come back to is like, well, yeah, I'll just overload with more weight. I just put more weight on the bar, I pick up a heavier dumbbell, a heavier medicine ball, whatever the case is, we're going to be overloading in these phases a little bit differently than, than what most people might expect. Mm -hmm. Could be volume, right? Could, exactly. We could be taking weight away. Mm-hmm. In most cases, we are because it's not about moving um, necessarily more weight. It's about moving weight fast. Exactly. We'll get into that. And then obviously the principle of progression, and that is we always have to be increasing the demand mm -hmm. uh, through through the, the, the course of the programming, understanding that we want to give the body the, the, just enough, like the minimum effective dose mm -hmm. or stimulus for exercise in order to get the maximum result or return on investment. And when we look at this, that declines over time, right? Your, the ability for you to maximize that power curve, if you will, will decline over time as you're going through your program. So I want people to understand when we, when we say we've carefully mapped this out, we've done our very best to think about this, getting a return on investment with every, every exercise, every rep, every set, every week that you're in this program so that at the same time, we're not we're not pushing so hard that you're going to burn yourself out. And hopefully, you know, again, you, you avoid getting hurt or, or injury. Mm -hmm. you, you work out hard enough. These things happen. That certainly happens, particularly if you've got some underlying things going on. But the point of this is, is getting people to understand the principle of progression, but also understand the principle of progression also includes a tremendous amount of patience. Patience, <laughs> but yeah, exactly. And so recovery, right? Yeah. And then the deload. So um, that's definitely program, programmed in here. Yeah. So th th just to, some some things to think about as you're going through the the program. What, after we've gone through all this, it's like people will be listening like, why do I want to do this? You know, wh who, who wants to do this type of program? I have to tell you, I think there's a lot of people that want to do it. And I think there's even more people that should be doing it. Uh, and again, this goes back to our conversation about getting ready for, you know, skiing and snowboarding mm -hmm. and whatnot. People should be doing this type of programming before they get up on, up on the mountain and expect their body to be able to perform in that environment, you know, exactly. especially day after day after day when they haven't been doing this, especially, and I don't, this, this is beyond like, yeah, but I, Scott, I train four or five days a week in the gym. I lift weights. You know, I do my strength and my hypertrophy training every week. That is much different than what we're talking about here. What we're talking about is using all that stuff that you've worked all this hard, you know, done all this hard work for in order to be able to really perform for you, whether you're on the mountain, on the mat, you know, like at jujitsu or it's martial arts or, you know, whatever. If you're on the court on the weekend, you're a weekend warrior you're out hiking, you go running, you want to be able to perform or, or just get involved in things. I would, I would describe this as a perfect program for somebody that wants to be fit for action. Mm -hmm. Fit for action meaning whatever life might throw at me, whether that's a pickup game, whether that's going to the beach and playing volleyball with my friends. Again, this, this isn't going to make you a better volleyball player, but it's certainly just go, going back to, you know, the adaptation piece, but it will put you in a great position to be able to be resilient, be strong, be powerful, be able to move laterally in different range and, ranges and planes of motion with speed and, and, mm -hmm. and accuracy. I would agree. You know, um, this is a fun program. I mean, you know, when you think about your average individual who's in the gym, who's working on, on hypertrophy or working on strength, um, that's what they're doing. Very rarely, you know, I've gone to some of our box gyms in the area to go and work out. Very rarely do you see them um, doing powerful, explosive types of exercises in that setting. So um, this is a really a fun program where you get to express, literally express the strength that you've been working on by um, doing more explosive movements, incorporating more explosive movements into your training. Yeah. So again, being fit for action means being able to kind of 
jump, run, bound, leap, uh, absorb forces, you know, fall down and, and be okay. Uh, and be able to, that's part of it. Right. right? Yeah. And, 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 and do, do it over and over again without being hurt or getting overly fatigued. So the part of that, about that, you just mentioned about going into big box gyms and kind of seeing the typical it's, you know, it's, chest and tries on Monday. It's back and buys on Tuesday. That yep. shit's still the same. And yes, I get it. You're right. I mean, that's your, that's it your, is. that's your typical bodybuilding. Let's call it a uh, hypertrophy routine. Strength usually comes secondary to that mm-hmm. for those people that kind of fall into that. A lot of people just fall into kind of what's comfortable or what they're good at or what makes them feel good. Nothing wrong with any of that. But you know, if you're getting bored or you're looking for a change or you're really looking like, Hey, you know, maybe I want to change, but this is a, this is a great program to start working on the, the change of body composition because mm-hmm. of the intensity that comes along with this. If you've been kind of stuck in a rut or whatever. And the other part about it is, is we, we've thrown in equipment that you may not typically use, but at this, because they're great pieces of equipment to elicit a specific response, but also we kept in mind that not everybody has necessarily has access to a ton of, you know, fancy stuff, mm-hmm. but if you are going to get into a program like this, again, this is more for the intermediate to advanced. You really need to have access and, and get the most out of it. Not that not that you can't make adjustments, but to really to get the most out of it, you really want to have a, like a really well-equipped home gym mm-hmm. or access to a, you know, to, to more of your traditional or conventional style gym or even like a, a CrossFit box that has, you know, plenty of stuff in there. Mm-hmm. Um some of the equipment, the, the equipment you would expect to see whenever you're building, you know, muscle strength and, and power, barbells, mm-hmm. body weight, dumbbells. dumbbells. Uh, but we started There's adding, some cables in there. Yeah, exactly. Um, you're going to want a power rack and a bench, adjustable bench. Um, we're, we're definitely throwing the kettlebells in this one because we start to add you know, some of the speed and momentum uh, components in there. So we, we use the kettlebells a little bit also to just sort of offset how we're, we're applying loads to the body, you know, what we're doing. Um, we, we, in, we involve or include the suspension trainer. So for those people mm-hmm. that have like the, the TRX or something like that out there, we, um, th- that, that's incorporated here. There's cables in there, like you mentioned, tubing bands, all mm-hmm. stuff that's common to uh, the the strong program, mm-hmm. um, but we start to see things like plow boxes. Yes, because uh, we are going to be working some plyometric type movements. I mean, whenever you're working power, plows are part of that. So plow boxes start to get get put in there. You'll see the battling ropes. Mm-hmm. Uh, it it being involved for multiple different things. The gluten ham developer, the yep. GHD. Uh, you know that generally only gets used for kind of one thing. <laughs> uh, reverse hypers is mm-hmm. kind of what you see. And and uh, so the GHD we're using for a couple of different things. Sandbags, mm-hmm. uh, med balls. I believe that that's, you know, kind of the majority of the things that you'll, you'll see in there. So if you have access to those, most gyms have access to that stuff now. Mm-hmm. Um, if you didn't have sandbags, you could use medicine balls or something else. If you don't have a GHD, that's fine. You could modify some stuff on the floor. That's, um, you know, boxes, you could use a bench. Um, if you don't have, um, ropes, sometimes you can use the heavier duty tubing. That one's a little bit harder, but most places have, have Have ropes. ropes And by the way, you can go down to the hardware store. You don't have to get this. Yeah. That's how I started. I just went down and got one of those big, you know, nylon polyurethane, ropes. It wasn't awesome and it didn't hold up for a long time, but it was pretty inexpensive. Mm -hmm. Just kept that thing in the garage. But the other stuff is the stuff that you would, you would kind of expect. And, and the way we apply it just from the exercise perspective, which we can talk about keeping in mind that these may not be an expert athlete that's doing this. So you're not going to see crazy. Well, when I say crazy, I just mean really advanced high skill things, lifts like the Olympic lifts. Mm -hmm. Um, so keep that in mind. I mean, just, just things to, to, to keep in mind if you're, if you're getting into a a program like this, I mean, I think those are things in in equipment. Most people would, would expect to see. I would agree. I would agree. All right. So four phases, we start with a basic anatomical adaptation phase. Mm -hmm. Uh, what's going on in there? So basic anatomical adaptation. Um, you know, with, within max, we did this in strong too. And within max, this is a four week phase where you're getting your, um, neurological, but then your soft tissue and your bones ready for load. So we're taking them through a range of motion. Um, and then we're also adding stress, but not too much stress so that your body is, 
uh, has its foundation to be stressed later. And when I mean stress, I mean adding more load later. So getting those muscle tendon junctions ready, because if you add too much load too soon or too much explosiveness too soon in a program, you're going to end up with some kind of tendinopathy perhaps, or some kind of muscular strain. So I think it's really important that um, people have um, go through this phase. Yeah. The, another way to look at this phase too, is for somebody that is coming off a very specific hypertrophy and strength training program and has been pushing the limits and they're reaching the end of that power curve in terms of applying that minimum effective dose and getting the results. And they have been pushing themselves at an intense, an intense level. So they finished off a program where volume was a little lower, intensity was a little mm-hmm. higher. You could look at this first four weeks as sort of a deload, also sure. a, a revisit mm-hmm. or, or a, um, yeah, a kind of a, a revisiting of some of those maybe movements that you got away from or that you've been neglecting gives you an opportunity to address some areas that may not be recovering quite as well, even though it's a little tightness here, a little soreness there, a little lack of mobility over here, uh, flexibility over there. It's a great way to do that and and really prime your body for and while coming off your last program going into this one. Mm-hmm. It's also, you know, especially if you've been out of the game a little bit. So the other person would be like, you know, hey, I'm pretty advanced at this. I just kind of got out of it during the holidays. I certainly haven't been on top of it. And this sounds right because I really need some structure Mm -hmm. in my life and in my programming right now. Make sure you get started in phase one and you really go through these things. This is not like, this is the, 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 what we're looking at is the volume is going to be a little higher, but the intensity is going to be a little lower, lower right? Mm-hmm. So you're getting a great workout. You're, we're just conditioning the body or maybe more specifically reconditioning the body and prepping you for what's about to come in the following phases. Mm-hmm. Extremely important. Yeah, that and, you know, the other thing is too, getting in your own head as far as how your body's feeling and moving through space, moving with the loads that you're using, recognizing the loads that you're using and, and writing it down because that's going to become your baseline for later on in um, phases two, three, and four. So recognizing, you know, um, how you're recovering as well. Are you sore? Because if you're sore and you're sore for multiple days, then you're probably doing too much. Yeah. Or, you know, maybe we need to start addressing things like, okay, well, well, I got this workout program in front of me, but I need to, I need to address my, my, basically my stress mitigation plan or my recovery mm-hmm. plan here. What am I doing with my nutrition? Gives you a good opportunity to not be doing too much too soon in a lot of different ways. Mm-hmm. And and hopefully helps people kind of stay on the path to thinking or the mindset of, look, this is a this is part one of a four part program. I really need to be patient, patient with this. And again, the intention there is is to prep you and build a little conditioning as you get into the to the next couple of uh, next couple of phases. That being phase number two, which is really a muscle building, or we'll call it a hypertrophy phase, which also continues to build some capacity. Mm -hmm. But when we're building muscle or when we're talking about building muscle, things change from a programming perspective uh, from from that initial capacity or, excuse me, anatomical adaptation phase. Mm -hmm. Now we've conditioned a little bit. Now we're going to start ramping things up a little bit. Um, This this is quite arguably phase two. Mm -hmm the muscle building phase is quite arguably the most important phase in this entire program. Mm -hmm. Because what, yeah, what you're doing is you're laying the groundwork. Yeah. So you're laying the groundwork as far as, um, you know, when you're going through hypertrophy, what you're doing is you're trying to recruit all the muscle fibers um, to help you produce force. And the other thing is too, you're also metabolically stressing your um, neuromuscular system. And so when you're stressing your neuromuscular, I'm sorry, when you're stressing your neuromuscular system, um, metabolically, what you're doing is you're trying to tap into your energy sources and use those energy sources so then that you can build upon that base from from what you had. So within this, this phase, you're also going to be going through um, some mechanical... You're going to be creating purposely some mechanical damage to your muscle fibers. And when you're doing that, what you're doing is um, you're then going to go through a repair phase, which is going to make you that much stronger for when you go into your strength phase. Yeah. So a couple of things. So the first thing is, as you mentioned, like the neuromuscular conditioning and building that's happening during this time. 
So there's recruitment of fibers, there's recovery of things, there's recruiting more of the nervous system to recruit more muscle fibers. And then with that, you get a volumization of the cell. You, you're not mm-hmm. putting on more muscle fibers, you're just using more. There's more nutrients, blood, fluid. That cell, those cells are, are growing. Mm-hmm. And so you what you what you're feeling is you're feeling that pump, right? You're getting, you're, you're, you're seeing your body change aesthetically. And a lot of people, I mean, who doesn't like that? Like, you know, you're doing the work on the biceps and the biceps start to grow, the chest, the back, everything starts to kind of start to come together. You mentioned the metabolic adaptation that's also happening here, mm-hmm. and that being how your body recovers, how your body utilizes nutrients, mm-hmm. and what it's doing to fuel this type of activity. So all this, you got metabolic and neurologic, neurological adaptation that's mm-hmm. happening. And you also have this modeling of, or mold, remodeling. Yeah, remodeling of tissue. This is why this is so important. Mm -hmm. We are training the tissue to be able to handle the stresses and the loads that are going to be now applied as we go further or deeper into the program. This is not a place or a thing that you want to neglect or take lightly. And when we say, you know, hypertrophy phase, this is not like, you know, we're, we're working aesthetics. We are working in the entire body here from top to bottom mm-hmm. so that it's synergistically working together and everything uh, that we that we do is focused to building muscle. And as we're building muscle, you're also going to be building strength. Mm-hmm. Now, you mentioned in the, here's a, a, I think, a second most important part in this type of a more advanced program that most people don't pay attention to. And you mentioned it already coming out of the first phase, which is you want to be hyper aware of the loads that you're lifting. Because this is what we apply, this loads or this, and you can look at it as rate of perceived exertion. This is critical Mm -hmm. in terms of maximizing your result going into phases three and four. So while these are very, let's just call it, while these feel more basic, Mm -hmm. uh, maybe the movements, the pushing, the pulling, the hinging, the rotating, the lunging, all those types of things from an exercise perspective, they are critical because when we move into the next phases, we are going to be stressing in phase two and, uh, or excuse me, phase three and four. We are going to be stressing the systems, all the things we talk about, neuromuscularly, neurologically, uh, uh, from an energy systems perspective, all of the, the recovery. We're going to be stressing that at the highest levels. Mm-hmm. So you really taking stock and maybe and keeping records, which we give you the materials to do and also be aware of all the other things. We talk about biofeedback trackers, which we provide inside the program as well to, okay, here's what's happening on paper with the numbers. Mm -hmm. My lifts are going up. They're not going up. They're going down, whatever. Hopefully they're all moving or trending in the right direction. Uh, As linear as the program sort of is life and results are never (laughs) linear. They kind of go up and down. So you're, Mm -hmm. you're backtracking this against your biofeedback, which becomes very important. You're like, how am I really feeling here? Mm -hmm. How's my body really responding to this? Am I sleeping well? Is my digestion where it needs to be? Those kind of things. So that before we go into those next two very intense phases, volume is going to come down Mm -hmm. and intensity is going to go up. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and you don't want to be doing that if you're, you're not feeling or not at, you know, Optimal. Optimal levels. Mm-hmm. Call it your 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and the other thing in in this um, hypertrophy and uh, capacity phase, uh, we're also working cardiovascularly yep. too. So you've got to have your, as you would say, engine to be able to perform at these higher intensities and higher levels. Yeah. We've thought about that. And, and also that engine is only as good as its weakest link. Mm-hmm. And so we're really trying to work the weak links in the muscle hypertrophy phase and we do that by adding one of the things that you'll you'll learn about if you don't already know about it. And we talk about it in detail and it's programmed into the program is what we refer to as accentuated eccentrics. And that is working different phases of the uh, range of motion that you're working those joints, those muscles within in order to make sure that we are going back to the beginning, owning those mm-hmm. movements. Mm-hmm. So accentuated eccentrics is really kind of working through um, the, well, I guess the point of it is, is we're, 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 we're going to be reaping the biomechanical and physiological uh, benefits like the, the size and strength that you can, you can build in this, in this particular phase, mm-hmm. but also your resting metabolic rate. You mentioned like building that engine and, mm-hmm. and how efficient is your body being. It helps with building flexibility, mm-hmm. mobility, um, and ultimately like a decrease 
and risk of injury because you're owning all of these Mm -hmm. movement patterns, all these movement patterns. Yeah, exactly. So we'll, we'll work through, you know, this, these accentuated eccentrics and that being just, we'll we'll work in pause reps. We're going to be working tempos. Uh, You know, you'll, you'll learn about those and you'll do those. And that's when, again, it was a squat and now it feels like a nightmare (laughs) because, you know, you're working, say like a a three second eccentric to a one second pause to maybe a two centric, a two second concentric. Mm -hmm. These are, we're really focusing on the intention and that full, fuller range uh, of motion. Mm -hmm. And with that, as we're putting that over, as we're taxing those, those, uh, all of those different things, again, intensity is starting to starting to build is that volume is staying high and eventually we're going to have to cross that 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 power band over to where the intensity stays a little higher and the volume starts to decrease but prior to doing that as we come to the the end of phase two we've programmed in a deload Mm -hmm. Uh, so we talk about deloads we've talked about we talked about deloads in the program we've talked about them before on the show we're giving our our bodies a period of rest Mm -hmm. uh, before we move into this next more intense active rest, active rest. (laughs) And and it's important to note here that we mentioned these, these phases are about four weeks. If you were feeling like you could take this, this phase another week, two weeks. Yeah. Cause you're seeing that you're improving on your loads or improving on your repetitions and just feeling really good. Then take it another couple of weeks. Yeah. This goes back to the concept of individuality. Not everybody is the same and people could respond and will respond differently. So paying attention, keeping track. Hey, if I'm feeling pretty good, uh, don't be anxious to move into the next thing. Cause anything, all the work that you do here, the whole goal is, is to be able to express and, and reap the benefits of that as, as we go down the mm-hmm. line. So, but that, that deload is important. You, there's a couple of things with that one. You, you, if you're coming to the end of phase two and you don't feel like you need maybe a little bit of a rest, I would double check with yourself Mm -hmm. and um, get past the feelings piece, you know, like (laughs) the emotions piece and take, take the rest. The other thing you want to check and be honest with yourself on is like, did I earn this? Mm -hmm. Am I really working Working at my my 75, 85, even 90% as I'm building into the, you know, up the intensity. And when you get Mm -hmm. the program, you'll see what we're talking about. Yeah. You should want that deload. Week. <laughs> yeah, it should be welcomed, right? Mm-hmm. And deload doesn't mean not working out, Mm-mm. right? Deload means there's a couple of we we basically give you like our five uh, our five favorite ways to kind of program in a deload within the program. We talk about it in detail. You can take your pick how you'd like to do it. You have all the exercises there if you want to just decrease volume, uh, if you want to decrease loads. There's multiple ways to 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 implement a deload in your program, and we we feel pretty good about the instructions that we've given in the tutorials that we've given for you to watch and read, uh, depending on how you like to consume comment Mm -hmm. or content. Sorry. Mm -hmm. All right. So coming out of there, we're moving into, we're moving into the strength phase. Mm -hmm. So we call it max strength. Now I think it's important to note, like the goal of this program is, is not to, to achieve the biggest bench press you've ever had in your life. Shouldn't be that Mm -hmm. or the biggest deadlift or the biggest squat. You may see some PRs. Um, We hope you do. I mean, that's the, you know, we hope, we hope that you're seeing that as you're going through there, but our goal is not to get you to the highest one rep max and these very specific, Mm -hmm. I'm going to call them very, they have a lot of utility, but these very limited movement patterns, Mm -hmm. right? Again, it's about being a faster, stronger, or excuse me, a faster, more powerful athlete uh, or human for all of these other activities being fit for action. So When we talk about max strength, what we're talking about is we are trying to achieve the maximum amount of strength we can in the movement patterns that we've provided for you Mm -hmm. prior to going in to try to express them. It, you know, when we start to look at again, uh, mass times velocity. Mm -hmm. So, um, important to understand again, this is not a power lifting program. Uh, that's something completely different, totally different types of, well, not completely different, but a lot, a, a much different approach to, to how we would program this. But you may, if you've done a powerlifting program, when you get into the strength phase, this might feel very familiar. I was going to say similar. Yeah. So yeah, within your max strength here, you're wanting to produce as much force, um, force as strength. So here, uh, your, your reps and your, your sets are going to be in your eight to 10 rep range and your sets will be at about three. Um, Here, this is where you're going to see more pause 
pause sets. And so what the pause set's going to do, talking pause about, reps. Mm-hmm. sorry, okay. sorry, sorry, pause reps. Thank you. Is um, what you're going to see with the pause reps is that you're going to, going back to owning the movement, you're going to be taking momentum out of the exercise and you're going to really have to recruit to uh, create as much force as you can to come out of a movement pattern with load. Yeah. So you, again, owning movement, building a max amount of strength at the bottom, top, middle, uh, every part of that movement pattern. So when you get into that squat, you can go whatever your range is, whether that's ass to grass Mm -hmm. or somewhere near that. And say in a squat as an example, that we're not bouncing, we're Mm -hmm. not using momentum. We're not doing any of that during this phase, during, excuse me, during this, this strength phase, Mm -hmm. we will be adding momentum. We will be adding the elastic components here as we move into the 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 next phase. phase. So again, being patient, this is about, hey, how much strength can I build through the entire movement pattern? Yep. And then also going through that, um, making sure that you're, you're keeping the time under load or the time under tension through these ranges of motion. So while it says pause, it's not um, coming to when you say ass to grass with squatting, it's not going all the way down in the squat and and then um, resting, losing, it's, yeah, losing, losing tension. tension. Yeah. It's getting down there, keeping tension for the time and then coming out of it. Yeah. So when we're creating strength, we're creating hypertrophy. We're, it's, we're talking about maintaining that tension for as long as we can or for, a, let's just say for a very controlled period. And mm-hmm. we program that in there very specifically because that's what we know through it's science, man. I mean, and, and again, people respond differently to everything or, or to many things that nobody's the same. But again, there's some tried and true methods that tend to work across the board for most people when applied properly uh, with the proper training age. There's a lot of, you know, you know, depends, but there's a lot of good information out there. And we're just sticking to the stuff that, that we know that's been, that's been tried, proved, and true. tried and true, you know, over and over and over again. So again, you can imagine if you're doing that, like the, the, the intensity now is up. So mm-hmm. we've decreased the volume, your reps and sets are a little lower, but the intensity or the, the, the amount of effort that you have to give during those, these particular workouts is going to feel significantly higher or high compared to maybe what you were doing previously in a different kind of way. So just, just adding in like those pause repetitions and a few other, few other little nuanced things that we, we, we program in there can make a massive difference on the, on the workout. Oh, for yeah. sure. And, and it'll keep you honest. I was just going to say, this goes back to, um, keeping that ego in check, right? Oh, 1000%. I, this is where you, you know, you, you're probably going to wind up having to pull some load off the loads, whatever they happen to be in order for you to complete the workout. And we want you to get through, it's very important that you get through those reps. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when we talk about pause repetitions or the intensity, maybe it gets to a point where you, you know, you bit off more than you can chew in this particular (laughs) set. You may have to deload that particular exercise during that set so that you can complete the repetitions. Mm -hmm. Very important that you complete the repetitions. Uh, Even if, if, so if the, if you can't complete the repetitions, then the weight is too, too much. Too much. Mm-hmm. You need to, so going back to checking your ego, this, this one, will, this one will serve you up a big fat piece of humble pie. If you're trying to do maybe what you did in the past, because if you're staying honest here, you're going to, you're going to be mm-hmm. in for some surprises. So, uh, I, respect that, have a good time with it. And, and know that, you know, as you move, continue to move through your phase phases here and you get into that power and power and uh, speed phase, when you come back to this, you're going to maintain what you, what you have there from a strength perspective and you're going to surpass it. So it's not about setting a PR every day in the gym with the strength phase. Um, it's, it's about, it's about completing the, completing the movement patterns, being honest, checking your ego, getting all the reps and sets in that you're supposed to be getting in and then recovering from that so that you can benefit by all the, all the work that you did. And you can expect, I think I mentioned this by the end of this one, you're probably going to need another deload. So, you know, a little bit of a break and just like the, uh, hypertrophy phase, if you felt like you could maybe take this another week, 10 days, uh, you know, two weeks or whatever, you have all the exercises there, nothing needs to be changed. Mm-hmm. We'll just apply the same concepts over those, over that time period. Um, until you recognize like, okay, I'm not getting the return on investment that I was getting here. That's a very individual, uh, you know, response as, yeah, as far as, yeah, an aspect, but the, 
this has all been in prep for this fourth and final phase, which is really like, this is where the sexy happens, right? This is where <laughs> this the, is the fun, this is the fun. But uh, again, you, and you've learned all of these things, uh, and uh, along the way, and you've, you've really been pushing yourself. You've been patient, you checked your ego, uh, you're, you're finding yourself stronger in, in ways that you hadn't felt before. Uh, ho hopefully, you know, you put on a little bit of muscle, you know, people are starting to notice three months into your program. Okay. This dude's, you know, this person's made, made some changes. Made some changes. Mm -hmm. Your clothes are fitting differently. Uh, you're probably bringing more confidence to the, you know, to the to the gym floor and into your into your daily life. We've we mentioned, you know, a couple couple of this a couple of times in the past, but like you know, we have a couple of coaches that have been on these programs, and we had one guy Marcus who is who had been on the program for he'd gone through strong. And he got through kind of an extended strong mm -hmm. and then he got into max. And this was during the time we wrote this stuff during COVID mm -hmm. and, uh, he had, he had kind of been on board while we were writing it when it was still kind of in a draft form before we had actually published it. And he came out the other side. Well, during that time we had a couple of our other, one of our other coaches had moved on in life and taken another career path in law enforcement. And he'd been gone and he came back. <laughs> Uh, he, he, he came back into the gym to work out. So this is almost, this is like a little more than a year. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a year and a half, like 18 months. He walks in there and goes, holy shit, what happened to Marcus? <laughs> he and, just blew up. Yeah, he just blew up. He goes, <laughs> what's, that, what's that kid doing? I need to be doing that. And uh, I was like, you know, hey man, I mean, it was a little bit longer conversation, but it was strong and max, dude. He's just doing the things that we've yeah. been doing here forever. He's just been... You know, had a lot more structure, right? Yeah. For for Marcus. Yeah, and you know, he learned a lot about nutrition during that during that time and how to feel himself, but it completely changed his physique and he's still maintaining that. That's the thing. It's not like this up and down with the mm -hmm. uh, he's and he's able to roll through his programming now and understand what works and what doesn't work. And he's experimenting with things. So mm -hmm. now he's adding in the Olympic lifting to his power and strength phases where he wasn't uh, or excuse power and speed phases, which he wasn't doing before because he didn't have that skills. He was th those skills. He was just really learning how to do all the basic stuff really well. The common stuff, uncommonly mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, as we're, circling back as we're moving back into this max and max power phase, we call this kind of the cash out phase. This mm -hmm. is like where we get to, you know, it, we've, we've been, we get to go all in and uh, there's a few things that happen here. We already sort of uh, put, put this, put this up in at the front. And that is you've done a lot of work to this point. So this should be fun. And the exercises get, you know, a little bit more, let's just say different. It's not stuff you typically see people doing in the big box gyms mm -hmm. because it's hard. Mm -hmm. And unless you've trained for it, it doesn't make a lot of sense to be doing that. I mean, I see people doing some of the things we're going to talk about here just as a means to get their heart rate up, yeah. but they're not really. What's the reason why no they don't really. Yeah. 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 There, there's not a lot of why. So if you're, if you're looking to be more powerful, more dominant on the mat, on the court, you know, on your mountain bike, you know, flying down, you know, the downhill in the spring and, <laughs> and going up the uphill or whatever, or, you know, you play like pick up basketball, volleyball, those types of things, or you like to get out and do the, 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 you know, the, the hikes or the runs or, or whatever with your, with your, with your buddies, maybe it's jumping on a surfboard or jumping on a, on a wakeboard in the summertime. This program is going to make, help you be better at all of those things, mm -hmm. uh, more explosive. Mm -hmm. So that's what I mean when we're, when we're having fun and this is the shit people want to do. So as you move into power, um, you, the, the intention here is really, really important because it's, we do move fast. Uh, we we want to be moving fast, but with speed tends to come some sloppy. Yeah. So we want to make sure that we have um, direction. So that's where our velocity comes in. So speed with, with a directional force. So um, you're, you're right. Absolutely. So instead of just speed, we're adding velocity to it. Yeah. Yeah. And so the, the, it's important to, to define or really outline the difference between power training versus strength training. Mm -hmm. These are very different things. Um, they, they're interrelated, but they are different. So strength is the ability to really just kind of overcome resistance, mm -hmm. right? Produce force, right? Produce force. Yeah. So that that's really it. So I either can or I can't, mm -hmm. right? I can either, I can either pull that, that 300 pounds off the, the squat rack bench and it comes down to my chest. I can either get it off me <laughs> or I can't. That's, that's strength where, mm -hmm. where our power refers to the ability or excuse me, refers to the ability to overcome the resistance in the shortest period of time. Mm -hmm. So what we've added is a time component, mm -hmm. right? And so in the end, what we're talking about is power equals force 
times velocity. So strength, but how fast can you apply uh, or speed, how, how, and what, what kind of speed can you apply to the force? And ultimately when we look at ath- athletes or athletics out there, I mean, there's plenty of examples. I mean, what's the first thing that comes to mind for you from like a power perspective, power uh, athletes? I would say jumping, basketball, right. <laughs> rebounding, um, throwing, yeah, for sports, overhead yeah. sports. Mm-hmm. Yeah, overhead sports. But yeah, I think basketball is a really good way to look at it. A basketball player does not need to be able to squat, a, you know, a house. Mm-hmm. They don't. What they need to be able to do is they need to be able to control their body weight in space. Yes. And is it, and with the strength that they have, explosively. Absorb and explosively mm-hmm, and, produce and, force. And produce force. So they can jump high. They can absorb the, the landings. They can move quickly side to side. So that's a good way of looking at that. Like uh, the, the other way would be to look at, you know, for a long time in boxing, you know, the heavyweights were always like the, the, the thing, right. And, and you watch those, watch those guys, but the, the big guys, you know, they move with a ton of explosion. So compare like a Mike Tyson type of fighter to, you know, the big power lifter guy that you see in the gym, you know, like Mike is big or mm-hmm. Mike was big. He's still big. I wouldn't want to fuck with Mike, <laughs> but you, you, Mike is still big, but you, Mike was big then, you know, when he, when he was mm-hmm. in his heyday. But if you put him in a, you, you put him in the ring with a, with a power lifter who may be the same size or bigger, who can, squat a thousand pounds and bench press, you know, 800 pounds. And, you know, just has these ridiculous feats of strength. Mike's going to clean up because he's going to be able to yes. apply the strength that he has and um, it, it violently mm-hmm. versus just having to move it one time or move it in one direction. So it's really about this kind of this violence of action, controlled violence of action that you have as a power athlete. And this is becoming, I uh, you know, I think much more well understood as we're moving on in sports. I mean, you're seeing the NFL is changing quite dramatically. Oh, yeah. I mean, I remember from back in the in the 80s and the, the team that comes to mind is um the the Chicago Bears yeah, yeah. versus football today. I yeah. mean, you had some really big offensive players and then now, I mean, yeah, they're big, but they are they're lean and they're super fast. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, don't get me started on on uh, the current NFL versus the past NFL. <laughs> okay, moving on. But <laughs> like they're taking the toughness out of that, a lot of the toughness out of that game, but what it's moved into is more skill, mm-hmm. right? And the agility. power yeah, yeah. and agility and the power aspects, uh, power and speed aspects are much different than they used to be, to your point. So uh, again, uh, uh, power equaling force times velocity. So we're, what we're really trying to do here is move light, lightweight fast. Mm-hmm. So whether that's our body weight or the ball, or the bar, uh, we need to be moving that that weight fast. Training slow or moving slow is doing nothing no. but teaching your body how to, to move, move slow. slowly. <laughs> so if you're using too much weight and you're moving slowly, mm-hmm. then you're training the neurological system, the neuromuscular system to move slow. Mm-hmm. And that is a completely opposite. I'm just going to say it's wrong from what we're doing. So if you walk into the gym and you see the dude over there is always trying to lift the most amount of weight. And let's say like he's on the platform and he's trying to do, he's doing cleans Uh, and it's just, it's this heavy ass weight every time. And it looks slow. That's because he's training slow, Mm -hmm. right? So he should probably be taking some weight off the bar and training faster. And he would incrementally, you could add a little bit more load as you go. And it's not like five or 10 pounds at a time. It's like one, maybe two kilos at a time, Mm -hmm. maybe two kilos at a time as they, as you start to be able to express that, that speed and that power. So, Mm -hmm. um, Again, moving lightweight fast, that's what you want to think about. So all that weight that you were pushing in the muscle building phase and the strength building phase, we're we're stepping away from that now. We're still using loads, but we're using much lighter loads. And we start to do things like more like contrast type training. Mm -hmm. If you want to maybe kind of revisit that for a second. Yeah. So with the contrast training, we're working um, through a range of motion for an exercise. Let's just say um, I used this example earlier a bench press. So we're going through a range of motion for a bench press. We're using a a heavier load, but then we're going into um, a plyometric or a more explosive exercise right afterwards. So the load is lighter. You're being more explosive. And what you're doing is you're working that neurological system to be quick, to be explosive. Yeah. So a couple other examples of people are kind of um, aren't kind of picking this up yet. Another would be like a, let's just say a barbell back squat to a plyo jump, mm-hmm. right? That would be a contrast training. So it's a heavy loaded uh, strength, st- strength movement, right? Mm-hmm. 
immediately followed with no rest time, immediately followed by a high velocity type of lower loaded uh, exercise. So again, squat to plyo jump, barbell back squat to plyo jump. Mm -hmm. uh, another one, like if you're, you're thinking deadlifting or hinging, maybe a deadlift or Romanian deadlift, heavier loaded barbell, Romanian deadlift, right into what we refer to like as a med ball log toss. So I'm going to take it, call it an underhand scoop where mm -hmm. you're taking a, a medicine ball and you're, you're throwing it underhand from that hinged position at a wall and then repeatedly doing that or in, or it could be a broad jump. So those are where you're just using your body weight. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So high load to low load, we go from a little bit more controlled, slower movement right into uh, a fast movement. And we're using what we call the, the uh, post activation potentiation principles mm -hmm. that exist and, 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 and essentially, you know, getting those those muscles to to really fire on. We're getting all those fibers to fire on. The neurological mm -hmm. system is firing on. We're really stressing it, and then we're moving into again this lower loaded uh, movement movement pattern where we're asking it to do it very 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 fast. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's fun, mm -hmm. uh, but it also creates a it's, very high demand. It, very high neuro, uh, neurological demand. Yes. Yeah. So your rest periods become longer, mm -hmm. right? We're 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 making sure we're taking the time in between to recover as maximally as we can inside each workout and then between each workout so that each time we come back, we are leaving nothing on the table. Mm -hmm. Nothing, nothing gets left on the, on the table. So, you know, when you're looking at like progressively overloading through uh, the strength and then going into the power and speed phases, uh, we, again, power equal, equaling force times velocity in order to have an increase in power, we can either do sort of one of two things. Mm -hmm. We can either increase force production, or that is how much load you know we're using. Think, yeah. Or two, we can increase velocity. That's the speed and the direction of the movement that we're trying to create. Um, yes, we can move heavy loads, but the thing to think about here is it's going to be at the expense of the rate yeah, at which we move the the yeah. load, and you know again that direction that we're moving it. So. If you think about this, if you increase the load and decrease the rate of that load moving, let's call it the velocity mm -hmm. or the speed for simple terms, do we increase power production? No. No, the answer is no. And so that goes back to the dude that's on the platform that's constantly trying to <laughs> over, you know, over, or outdo himself every day or any, everybody else in the gym by lifting those heavier loads slow. Mm -hmm. You are not increasing power. You could be increasing strength, but you're not going to be increasing your power because you are training your body slow mm -hmm. and you're, you're teaching it to move slow. So we're always going to be moving through this, through this last phase. And so, you know, if you're a slow mover and you guys have seen those people in the gym and as coaches, we, we get those as clients <laughs> sometime. We're like, no, you need to move faster. Like you give them, we finally moving or we're advancing to like a kettlebell swing and mm -hmm. they want to, they want to really just kind of go through the motions or slow and they're kind of lifting with their arms and they haven't learned how to explosively power, you know, to hinge through their hips, hips. right. Mm -hmm. And they're in their trunk. So they're, they're, you, you guys, you, everybody listening right now has seen that person where you're like, that's not exactly how that's supposed to be done. Uh, it can get frustrating because we're trying to coach them like move faster and they're just mm -hmm. not getting it. Like they get the movement pattern. Yeah. The, the it, hinge looks great. They telling just can, them to use a lighter load, like, but I don't want to use a lighter load. Right. So this is one of those times where people get, again, you need to have a little bit more of an advanced training age in order to be able to really reap the, reap the benefits out of here. So, mm -hmm. um, by the time you're done with that, you're going to be, you're going to be the person in the, in the gym, you know, at the end of phase four, the middle to the end of, of phase four and max, where people are going to be stopping their workout to watch what the hell it is that you're mm -hmm. doing. That that's when the chair and the popcorn comes out where people are sitting down and going, look at this, look at this dude. You're going to be moving and looking like an athlete, not like a bodybuilder, mm -hmm. uh, not like, you know, the person that's just kind of going through the motions and again, if you were that endurance athlete, this, you know, that was, you know, just kind of really controlling, you know, the intensity at which you're working over long, slower distances or whatever, you're going to feel a major difference. You're going to look like a completely different athlete mm -hmm. out on the floor. Again, if you're a bodybuilder and you start to, to add this type of programming, now you're going to be looking like the big, strong monster that can actually move their body. So not, it's not just all muscle. There's actually some <laughs> function to that muscle, right? And if you're that person that's, you know, just looking for a little bit of a change, mm -hmm. uh, this is going to help you with your physique. It's going to help you with your, with your, um, with, with the, the, the strength that you're hopefully trying to build or kind of maintain, 
if you're on the mat, if you're going to the jiu-jitsu, you know, school or, or the, the academy, you, your, your opponents are going to notice. They're going to notice. You're going to be a faster, stronger, more powerful athlete. And, and quite, quite, quite frankly, the, 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 the more dominant athlete from the power and strength perspective is the one that's going to win at the end of the day. Like technique kills. Yes. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, you put that person that's got a little bit of skill and technique, you know, and you give them some power and speed and strength. And that's a force to be reckoned with. Yeah. You don't have to know a ton, uh, but that, that'll get you a long way. So things to, you know, it, it really is a great program for everybody. Keeping in mind, mm -hmm. as long as you got that little bit of, of base under, underneath you. Um, those are, those are things that you could expect from, from working through max. Um, is there anything we've kind of left out here, you know, to, that we want to let people know before we, we wrap this thing up? I don't think so. Um, you know, I think as you, as you have said in the past, if there's questions, one of the things that's great about, um, RDF strong and RDF max is that we're here. Yeah. So you can reach out and ask us questions and you'll get a person to, to respond. Yeah. We get these questions every day, by the way. So people that are on like our online membership or are doing uh, strong and you'll see us post them on our Instagram and things like that, whether working out in their garage or at their local gym, or even at the gyms that they, they're, they're a part of maybe even coaching at. We have some coaches doing our programs, but they, that, that is, I think what's a slightly unique and we're not doing this through like a Facebook group or, you know, mm -hmm. some, you know, group, you know, chat, you can reach out directly to us and we will respond directly to your, to your question. We have a whole staff of people here, coaches and, uh, and staff members that have been doing this stuff forever. And we, we pride ourselves in getting right back to people. Mm -hmm. So if you have questions about the program, uh, then go to rdfmax.com. There's going to be plenty of information there. It's, it's also, it'd be found at rdftrainonline.com. But if you go directly to rdfmax.com, it'll take you right to the page. It'll talk, talk you through a little bit of what we, what we, um, what we went through today. And, uh, when you get there, you can also use code max 20 to get 20% off. So if you go to rdfmax.com, use code max 20, you can get 20% off the program and, uh, and keep us posted on what you're doing. Make sure you tag us in, in, in all your workouts. Yeah, it'd be great to see. Yeah. It's always good to see people, you know, getting the results and, and asking questions for that matter and encouraging other people to do the same. So that's it.